Stephanie Hi, Jim Delapine here. I want to give you some, some video feedback here and show you how you can improve this. So first of all, uh, yeah, don't uh, include your name here. Just this should be the only text on here. So I'm looking through your I'm looking through everything here. And uh, well, I do see that you have a, an adjustment layer. That's a clipping mask. And you also masked out the icing parts, so good job on that. And you do have, uh, well, you have a selection that's saved and renamed, so uh, it doesn't really serve any purpose, but that's, you accomplished the task. So let's talk about how you can improve this, especially with regards to shadows. So first of all, this text here, um, I, your choices for this don't do not match like the 3D environment. So I'm going to show you um, what I think would look better, and I'd like you to do this. So if you double-click on the FX icon for Flippin' Food Fred, you'll get the layer start dialog box come up. Select Bevelin and Boss. I mean, purple is fine. I don't care what color it is. But uh, for for this, I would choose uh, the drop-down menu here. I would choose Emboss. And then decrease the depth um, uh, and size. So um, let's bring the size down and maybe make the depth. So I have it as being uh, the depth is 188% and the size is 16. It just makes it look like it's, it's raised off the surface a little bit, okay? Um, and then I'll just hit OK. All right, so that's a lot cleaner and it fits the background. The text is a little bit too close to the edges, but that's OK. So now for Fred, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply the same technique, but we're going to cheat or maybe not cheat. We'll be more efficient here. I'm going to duplicate this layer style to this Fred one. OK, so all you need to do is hold down the Alt or Option key and drag that FX down to the Fred Purple Effect text layer. There you go. Okay? So, so you accomplished that. So let's talk about shadows. So let's zoom in here. So I see you have a shadow here. Um, doesn't look too effective yet. Let's see what we can do to make this a little better. So let me make this 100%. All right? You have it in the correct mode. But what we'll do is we'll soften the edges here. All right, so it's a it's a better shadow. So I'm going to with this layer active, click on the layer mask icon, go to my paintbrush, go up to my paintbrush options here. Make sure it's at zero percent hardness. We want a soft edged brush, and then I'll make a larger brush uh, that's perhaps uh, we guess 125 pixels, and then um, I'm painting on the layer mask now, and then I'm just going to click along the edges here, and Oh wait, make sure you're at 100% hardness with the paintbrush. All right, and then just click along the edges here and that softens that edge. Okay, bam. I don't know what's going on over here. All right, but so you have that. Now, what we're going to do is throw a shadow onto the ice cream cones. Okay, that'll make it look like it's uh, at least coming, uh, sticking into the strawberry and make it a little bit more realistic. Okay, so with uh, let's go to this cone here. Okay, so we have that cone there, and now what I'll do is create a new. Uh, I just noticed something here. You don't have any. Uh, let's see here. Let me go back to this. Let me see. I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer for that cone layer and automatically clip it immediately. Okay, and just see if we can improve this. Uh, looks like you already did, or it was done with. Yeah, I'd like to get a little more contrast in here. So with levels, just drag the the uh, left shadow slider over a little bit, so it looks like that. Okay, these are much too light, and they have they lack they lack um, shadow and color. So I'll do the same thing for this one. Okay, so I'm selecting this one as long as my auto select is checked. My move tool is active, as when I click on the cone, it goes right to that layer. I'll immediately create a levels adjustment layer for that, and I will immediately clip it by Alt or Option clicking in between 
the adjustable layer and that layer below. I'll drag it to the side and then drag in some shadows for it. Okay, and then I'll cl close out of that, and there, that looks better. So what we want need a shadow thrown onto the cone here. So with this layer active here, I need to select the adjustment layer on top of that, and then create a new layer. Okay, we're going to throw a shadow onto this. So let's see where that. Okay, so so with this new layer active, okay, this is the one above the levels adjustment layer for this cone. All right, we're going to control click on the layer mask for that cone. Okay, that puts a selection around here. We want that selection because we want everything to stay inside the selection when we paint. So now with the paintbrush tool active. Um, I have a soft edge brush, 0% hardness. I have gray as my foreground color. All right, so if you click on the foreground color, just select the gray over here. Hit OK. All right, now I'm now going to paint on this layer with a brush. I'm going to go a little larger, maybe 150, and then click. Drag there. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to put that into multiply mode. All right, so that's a true shadow now. Okay. So that's so now I'll deselect. All right. So now it looks like it's sticking in there a little better anyway. So we'll do the same thing for the other cone. I'll select that. Then select the adjustment layer above that I created and then create a new layer on top of that. Then control click on the layer mask for that that layer here and then go to my paintbrush tool and then I'm painting on that layer. I'm just going to paint a little bit in here, try to imagine what it would look like, okay? And then putting that into multiply mode. Okay. And then maybe paint it a little darker. Okay. So there you go. All right. So that looks better. Okay. So just accomplish that. Um, I see you do have that, and you are good to go. All right. Take care now.